In one week, voting will be complete, but the 2024 election will not be over. Ballots will still need to be tallied, and in some cases, there may be required state recounts, which has happened at least 36 times since the year 2000, according to the nonpartisan group Fair Vote. Once a winner is declared, then comes the election certification on January 6. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland joins me now on set. Scott, so good to see you. What are some of the reasons that results of a state election can be continued? tested and what happens when it is. Yeah, this would happen at a state capitol through the process between Election Day and December 14th when those electoral votes are certified. There's any number of issues legally or with ballot uh, perfections or ballot curing that need to be solved. But a lot of this is supposed to be settled early in December. What was different about 2020, Lindsay, is so much of this, because of baseless conspiracy theories, bled into January 6th when the certification happened at the congressional level. That stuff should have been disposed of a month earlier. All of this was infused by baseless claims, kind of expanded the timetable. So from local officials who may try to deny certification to politicians who are already planting seeds of voter fraud, how high is the concern that January 6, 2025 will not go smoothly? There are several different types of concerns. Let's start with the certification issues. There are these legal challenges planted in three battleground states, North Carolina, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, trying to challenge how the oversight of overseas ballots was conducted, trying to make it more rigid for somebody who lives in those states to vote from overseas. Judges threw all of them out, saying it was the 11th hour and could disenfranchise voters. Not going to work. But those could be footholds for election deniers to try to challenge results on November 6th, November 7th, all the way through January 6th. That's one concern. The other concern is what happens if there is some mechanization in the U.S. House to try to stop the certification again. What if it's a Republican Speaker of the House who's inclined to try to infuse those challenges with energy? What happens if the Senate also tries to challenge the results and do more than Congress is supposed to do and the Vice President is supposed to do, which is just to ministerially read the state's results and accept them? There's concerns, and I can tell you this from our reporting, Lindsay, House Democrats have been war-rooming this on Capitol Hill, planning for contingencies of how to stop anybody from weaponizing those levers of government to block the certification of a duly held election. You know, this is um, this is a very confusing topic for me, I think, because of all of the what ifs that could happen, mm -hmm. this sort of brave new world that we could find ourselves in. What are the unknowns that could affect certification from, as you mentioned, whomever the Speaker of the House might be to the makeup of Congress itself? Well, those who have some faith in the Constitution and the system say whoever wins this election is going to get certified when all is said and done. But lots of things can change the level of messiness between here and there. Who's going to control Congress? That's as much a toss-up as the presidential race itself. Does the presidential winner have the same party controlling the levers in Congress? It's quite possible they don't. In this unique year, it's possible all three flip. Senate control, House control, hmm. and the White House. So that causes some muddiness, but there should be some faith that whoever wins this election gets through January 6th, but perhaps not with some messiness. Okay, Scott McFarland, you'll be there for every second and step. Thank you so much. And you can watch election night with the CBS News team live from our election headquarters here in New York and with our team spread out across the country. Join us for real-time results, analysis, and exclusive polling. Coverage starts at 4 p.m. Eastern on CBS News 24-7 and continues at 7 p.m. Eastern on CBS.